what's up tribe welcome back it's been a minute it has been a minute but we are back for the wire y'all know my color be acting up for the wire season three all right and so i'm gonna go ahead and warn y'all now if you don't watch the wire um and you just been kind of following my reviews or whatever so like season one dealt with bringing down avon barksdale right season two the whole ports at the end of season two we saw where they were back up on the wire because of prop joe right they found that connection between the the, the um down to the port and prop joe season three we're back into the the drug game but you're going to see a lot more of city hall a lot more politics in season three okay so we start this episode off gentrification is coming to baltimore and baltimore is out of control like i'm talking about in the, in the show the wire okay don't come for me baltimore people i'm talking about the wire i'm talking about the show murder is up the drugs are out of control and people the towers are actually coming down they're having this whole ceremony we're, we're introduced to mayor reese i mean excuse me mayor royce played by glenn, uh, glenn thurman and um the towers are actually coming down now Bodie could care less about it but Pooh is worried who is like well first of all i grew up in the towers like that's a part of my childhood that's being destroyed second of all what are we gonna do to work like, like, that's our job. <laughs> the towers is our job. And so, um, we see we, we see this whole situation going down. Y'all know I gotta go to my notes, child, because you know the why I be giving you all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, so we see that the task force, they are back up on those phones with Cheese. They're following him around, but of course, they're smart. They're not saying anything on the wire. They're not giving them anything. They've been on these wires for six months, okay? After the port case, they've been on the wires for six months, and they are not getting anything. And y'all know how McNulty, he ain't the patient, most patient guy in the world. And Daniels is getting pressure from the DA, like, what are we going to do? Like, we're up on these wires. We're not getting anything off of the wires. What are we going to do? Um, um, Herc and Carver are down... They're working under a new major that we met. We met last season, but we only met him in one scene. But we're going to see a lot more Bunny this season. And I think next season. Um, we're going to see a lot more Mr. Bunny, okay? Now, uh, they are still doing what they're doing, child. They fucking up. They are screwing it all up. Uh, we saw them in this episode. We saw them going this high-speed high chase where they came up with this whole plan about how they wasn't going to follow the, the, the little runner because he don't have nothing. But they done switched it up on him, and the runner ended up with the drugs, and now they chasing him all through the neighborhood. And, you know, they going one way, he going the other way. They going left, they, he going right. And they end up finally catching him, but by the time they catch him, ain't no drugs in that bag. He had picked up the stash. But by the time they caught him, he had hid the stash again, or he had dumped the stash or something. He ain't had no stash. So, um, again, they're still being Carver and Hurt, child. They're still Carver and Hurt. Um, so we got pastrami sandwich, and we have, um, my boy Freeman. Again, they up on the phones. They're trying to figure out the codes. They're doing their same thing. They're getting the numbers. They're trying to figure out the codes. But they weren't able to get anybody on the phone talking about drugs except for one guy one guy but he happens to be the nephew of prop joe so he probably ain't worried about no kind of job security but let me tell you something nephews of these drug dealers may not always do so well ask the angelo that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say um we see carver i mean lord we see stringer bell meeting with the crew and he got them doing robber's rules of order honey they can't speak until they are being recognized by the chair and basically, um, he's trying to get them to understand that with the towers being gone, they're going to have to change their mode of operandi. You know, being a corner boy is no longer the rule, the, the order of the day. Like, you being a corner boy is not going to get us where we need to be. He said, we need to focus on the product. And if we have the best product on the street, we don't have to work no corners. People are going to come to us, and we're just going to split the package with them. And Poop was like, well, what What if that don't happen? Well, I'm sorry, not Poop. Uh, we see um, the introduction of Charles, Big Charles, a.k.a. Big G. Um, shout out to DC. Um, 
and my boy, Big G. Anyway, but he was like, well, what happens if we can't get them to buy our product? Like, what, what, what's going to happen? And Stringer was like, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And then Poop made the comment, well, like, we're going to look like straight suckers out here. Like, you know, and Stringer was like, I need you to change your mindset. Like you thinking like a like a like a low level thug, and we trying to turn this into a corporation. So we don't care about them corners no more. We are all about trying to you know move up the ladder and be moving packages. Let them work the corners. Let them dudes work the corners and do hand to hands. We ain't worried about that, you know. Um, Pooh still don't get it. He got a little embarrassed. He did get a little embarrassed, and he still don't get it. Um. But in the meantime and in between time, we go to um, the city council, right? We have a meeting with the city council where the uh, acting um, commissioner and uh, Major Rawls are all down, you know, going over their stats, meeting, going over their stats of what's going on in Baltimore, how many killings, murders, all this, that, and the other. And we're introduced to a new guy. I think it's um, Cursetti. I know I might be saying his name wrong, but y'all know who I'm talking about. It's Carsetti. 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 And, um, you know, he's talking to him about the stats and everything. And we also see Lieutenant uh, Daniel's wife down down there looking looking at some things. And you're like, okay, what's she doing here? Down to the city council meeting? What's she doing here? We're going to find out soon enough. And so... Um, Carsetti ends up inviting the acting commissioner out to lunch. And basically, he's telling him, listen, I need you on my team. If I need, if I can get you on my team, I can make life real, real easy for you, you know? I can get you, you know, get the right committees to get you what you need, you know, get, get your extra funding to make sure that you guys have what y'all need. But, you know, I'm looking at some bigger and better things, and I, I, I'm just trying to get you on my side. Playing that politics game. Basically, he's telling, letting him know, listen, I ain't trying to be a councilman all my life. I'm looking at the mayor's position, and I need to know if I got you in my pocket. Uh, well, the commander, of course, played it perfect. He was like, yeah, no. He said, you know, I learned about um, following the chain of command. And the last I checked, the person that I report to is the mayor. So he's the only one that I need to be talking to. Get it? got it well Carsetti got him back I'm gonna get his name right because I know I'm saying it wrong but y'all know what I'm talking about because when the next time they had to bring their tails down there to um, report baby he done called the media and not only did he call the media but he licked them a new one he made he embarrassed them so bad and he talked about how bad the murders were and how out of control the budget was and how they were paying money for um, trips to Miami and for private drivers for majors and lieutenants instead of putting the money on the streets where it needed to be while all of these crimes are going up, 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 right? So the commissioner ends up going to the mayor saying, listen, bruh, this is happening because I fell on my sword for you. So what are we going to do about it? And he said, we got to make the numbers look good. If we can get the murders under a certain spot and we can get this looking good and that looking good, then the rest of it don't matter. He's trying to embarrass us. We know what he's doing. He coming for me. You wouldn't play ball. So what we got to do is just make sure we got the numbers covered so we'll be all right. So what did they do? They took it back to their majors, Bunny being one of them. This is important. And basically told them, we got to make these numbers look good. And Bunny was like, listen, I know how to make a robbery look like an assault. I know how to make an assault look like a misdemeanor. But how do we get rid of bodies? I mean, a murder is a murder is a murder. Like, I, like we can't make it no different. A murder is a murder is a murder. And so, um, we see my boy uh, Stan. He told Bunny at the end of the meeting, you better watch yourself, bro. You out here playing games. He said, listen, I'm six months to my 30, I'll be retiring a major. What they gonna do to me? Famous last words, right? So, all right, y'all. Now back down to the streets. Who do we run into? 
that damn Bubs. Listen, Bubs is still out there hustling uh, metal. Him and his buddy, him and his white boy, they are still out here stealing, stealing uh, uh, refrigerator. I mean, um, uh, um, what them things called? Pipes and stuff. I was gonna say something else, but uh, pipes and stuff. And they ended up actually running to a new character, Marlo. Now, if y'all watch The Wire, y'all know Marlo becomes a really big part of this story. But this is our first glimpse into Marlo. And Bubs and, and his boy, they end up getting punked by Marlo's boys. Because um, they were going to kill him for scratching up their car with their metal. But he says, listen, either you're going to kill him or you're not. But I got places to be. Do what you're going to do. So Bubs tells him, he said, listen, I'm about to go sell this. I'll be back. I'll make it right. They end up, he said, all right, but you got to leave something in return. Well, you know, they don't have nothing valuable other than their clothes. So Lord demanded and stole their pants. Um, and by the time they sold the metal, went back to the dudes to get their pants back or something back and tried to get high, it wasn't hardly nothing left. And Buzz was like, listen, this is getting old real quick. Like, I'm tired of this, this, this hustling backwards type situation. Like, I feel like, you know... I feel like I've been on this hamster wheel, and, and it's not getting better, and I'm, I'm really, it's getting old. I'm really tired of it. So, McNulty and Freeman and them decide that their best bet is to try and flip, because they're getting pressure. They're really getting pressure, and their best bet is to try to flip one of the street boys to roll up on one of the lieutenants so they could get to prop Joe. Now, the reality is they know that that is not happening. It's a snowball chance in hell that anybody is going to turn on flip on prop Joe, especially on that level, especially with what the charges are going to be. It's just going to be some simple just distribution. Everybody know that that's the chance you take when you're out there on that corner. So ain't nobody really going to roll on prop Joe, but that's the best they got because they're not going to renew these um, wires. You know, they're like, we're spending a whole lot of money on these wires and ain't nothing coming out of it. Well, Daniels takes that idea down to the commissioner. The commissioner says, and the commissioner knows what they're doing. He likes, so basically y'all ain't got nothing. He was like, I'm spending way too much money on these wires for y'all to come back empty. And he was like, listen, bro, this the best I got. He said, what about my promotion? Commissioner said, listen, I done did what I was supposed to do. I took the promotion over, but it's sitting on the mayor's desk. It's, it's on him. And he was like, well, I did what I was supposed to do. What you mean it's sitting on the mayor's desk? He said, listen. I kept my promise to you. I told you that I was going to give you the promotion. I put the paperwork in, but I don't make the final approval. But the mayor is a little nervous because he wants to know what your wife is up to. Daniels was like, my wife? What are you talking about? Well, you know, rumor has it that your wife is running for a council member seat against somebody that's a friend of his, somebody that's pretty loyal. So he's a little nervous about what your wife is going to do. And so he might be sitting on your promotion until we get all that sorted out. And Dales was like, but that's my wife's business. I don't have nothing to do with that. I mean, Dales and his wife ain't even together no more for all intents and purposes. Child, he's still sleeping in the... I don't even, he ain't even in the guest bedroom no more. He's sleeping in the den. We see him come home and him and his wife, you know, they play nice for her because they having one of her a little campaign meeting, a little, you know, before you actually announce that you're going to run for something, you have to put your people in place. So it was one of those little planning meetings, right? And he comes in and he plays nice and all that good stuff. He says all the right things. And child, he says, well, I'm going to leave y'all, you know, to y'all's business. And he got to pretend like he going upstairs to the bedroom. He, they so separated that he wouldn't even go in the bedroom and lay down on the bed until the meeting was over. He sat in a bench in the hallway. I said, now, you know, that's real separated. So when, you know, she let him know they were gone. And she, he comes down the stairs and he's like, you know, she said, look, I'm sorry, but, you know, they think it's a really important, you know, for appearances that we look like, you know, that we're in a good place. And he was like, I get it. It's cool. And he walked right on past her into his little den, honey. I said, oh, y'all real separated. Because at least last season, he was still upstairs. Not in her bedroom. So... Things aren't good between her and Daniels. Now, poor McNulty. McNulty's wife has moved on, honey. McNulty's um, wife got herself a new man who looked like he got a little bit of change change. They down to the baseball game, and him and um, 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 Bunk are sitting up in the mezzanine, 
and McNulty's ex-wife and his and his, uh, her new boyfriend, they sitting down like in the second row. I mean, you could you could smell the dirt from their seats, honey. Um. Oh Lord. Okay. So another side story which becomes interesting is a, a character by the name of Cuddy. Now we see Cuddy is in jail. He's still he with Avon and he with um. Oh shoot, you know my boy, the shooter. Not Bodie. Um Ah It's gonna hurt me, but yeah. Little baby, you know who I'm talking about. She's gonna put it in the comments. Um But it's his last day. And so Avon rolls up one of them and Avon was like, Listen, I, I'm gonna be out of here soon. And when I get out of here, I got some I got some scores to settle and I'm gonna have to do some cleaning up. I'm gonna have to put my business back in order. And I could really use a soldier to help me out. I could really use a soldier to help me out. And dude, I mean, you could tell he's being respectful to Avon, but I don't feel like he really here for it. But he's not going to be disrespectful to Avon, you know, Avon Barksdale, right? So Avon was like, here, take this number, get him a call. When you get out, we're going to get you some work, get you back on your feet. And so he takes the phone number and he walks off. And Avon, you know, he turns to his boy. He was like, listen, I don't know. I think, I think jail might have broke him. He was like, sir, let me tell you something. This dude shot somebody in broad daylight and then called the police and said, come and get me. I did it. He was like, nah, he good. <laughs> like, he know exactly what he doing. So, um, he gets home, and of course, Baltimore looks different. He been in jail for 14 years, so it ain't the same Baltimore. You know, uh, row houses are boarded up, street grass is overgrown in the street, people just selling drugs right out in the open, hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, out in the open. And, um... You know, he, he ends up going home, and he ends up making the phone call. He calls the number that Avon gave him, and they give him a package. They like, listen, you know, Avon said to take care of you, so we got you a little package. And they give him a, a little street package for him to sell. Try to get him back on his feet. He ain't really trying to get into all of that. He ain't really trying to, you know, get into selling the drugs again. So he rolls up on the neighborhood drug dude. He been keeping keep an eye out. He been sitting on the stoop watching... The, the, the who's the who and the what's what. So he rolls up on a dude and he's like, listen, I got a I got a proposition for you. I got this package, you know, I just got out of the joint. They put me back on my feet. But I ain't really trying to be up on the liability. Like, I ain't trying to get caught up the day after I get out of jail. So how about I let you sell my package and we split the money? So first dude was like 50-50 and he was like, nah, like, what you mean 50-50? Like, it's my product. It's all profit for you. He was like, yeah, but I'm also taking in the liability. So they negotiate a deal. So a couple of days later, Cuddy goes back to him. He's like, where's my money? Dude was like, oh, I hate to, you know, some unfortunate things happened. The police done rolled up on us, and we uh, we lost your package. He was like, what the hell do you mean you lost my package? He said, well, what's the number? If the police came and got your stuff, they had to give you a number. He said, mm, nah, that's old school. We don't do stuff like that anymore. And so Cuddy giving him that look like, bruh, I know you lying. So then dude pulls a gun on Cuddy, and Cuddy rolls off, but he, you know, he disrespected him as he walking off, talking about some, yeah, you old school motherfucker, da 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 And in my mind, I'm like, I don't think, I don't think that's what you want, bruh. I, 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 I just don't think that's what you want. Now, you might not know that's not what you want. But I don't think that's what you want. But anyway. So, um, then we see Bunny. Again, we're going to see a lot of Bunny. Bunny says that he's going to go out on patrol. He's going to go patrol his, his district, see what's going on, see the who's the who and the what's what. And we see Bunny driving around in his, you know, um, car surveying the street at night and it's just it's just a shit show guys all out there selling drugs little kids out there selling drugs i mean it's just it's, it's it's just not good and you see him really disheartened by what he's seeing as he's driving through this is his district and then he stops at a light and this boy rolls up on him telling my son what you want trying to sell him some drugs now here's the thing 
he doesn't have his shirt on i mean his hat on but he still has his lieutenant his white lieutenant shirt on and his name tag and the little boy is and bunny's looking at him like what he was like yeah he was like what you want what what can i get you and he was like what like i'm gonna give you one more chance bruh and the little boy was like listen either you want it or you don't what you want either you want it or you don't so he finally puts his hat on and the little boy you know walks off he still don't run like he's scared he just kind of walks off like he embarrassed that he just tried to sell some drugs to the police but it still wasn't any type of sense of urgency it was it was interesting you know we we set some things up here last but not least we see mcnulty going through the old avon boxdale case file he said listen we sort of had a stalemate with where we are now and we can't get nothing new if we don't remember where we came from and it sort of reminds you like you see the picture of um d'angelo you see the picture of um, michael b jordan you know before he was murdered uh, on the show on the show we see all of those different things right um and that was episode one that was that was episode one anyway let me know what y'all think drop it in those comments peace